Ground mount systems are becoming more and more um, common in rural areas where roof real estate tends to be a lot less. There are a lot of considerations to look at with ground mount. The, the kind of soil you're dealing with, the proximity to the main switchboard, the, the fact that trenching is involved in a lot of cases, well in all cases with ground mount. The spacing between the rows becomes very important. So what constitutes a ground mount system? Basically a ground mount system involves the construction of a, a freestanding steel or aluminium structure. And this is firmly anchored to the ground in most cases. And it supports ultimately a photovoltaic array. Commercial ground mount systems compared to a roof mount system add another layer of complexity on top of existing installation requirements and there's a lot more documentation required than the more traditional roof mount situation. Vegetation overlays, Aboriginal heritage overlays, traffic management plans, rare and endangered species um, survey results. And in some cases with ground mount syst uh, systems, depending on the size, a building permit is required as well. So with ground mount systems, we are looking at a completely different canvas from roof mount. Other considerations with ground mount include, is the area a floodplain? You really don't want to be designing your ground mount system in an area that has um, a, a, an ephemeral nature. In other words, it can be flooded for three or four months of the year and then dry for the rest. Also, when it comes to clays, reactive and non-reactive clays. Get to know your clays. Reactive clays are probably one of the worst things that you can put a ground mount system on because of the, the, the ability of the earth to increase, uh, the crack size to increase and decrease when it gets wet and when it, when it dries out. And this has resulted historically in a lot of the earlier solar farms developing a bit of a lean and contractors have had to go to site and basically put a concrete collar around these posts to write them to get them into a more a vertical, their original vertical position. So something to be, be very aware of. When it comes to design, in a roof situation, commercial solar companies will design for the panels to be flat to the roof or on tilt. And the decision is based on the physical nature of the roof and it's weighted, weighted against cost-benefit analysis around increased labour costs versus more output versus system price. But with ground mount systems in nearly all cases, panels are tilted at the optimum for the location in question. The concept of agrivoltaics came around about in 1981 by a German fellow and effectively what it means is this, is the combination of renewable energy, in most cases solar, but also wind farms, cropping, and the use of livestock. So how it works is this. The solar panels are put into a ground mount configuration with some slight variations on your standard ground mount. In some cases, they are set up a lot higher, so more available light can come in under the panel. The row spacing can sometimes be wider to allow crops and animals to graze. And the other option is when the panels are actually placed, instead of being butted up against each other with a 15 to 25, 30 mil gap, they tend to have a wider gap. So what we're talking about is a mixed land proposition. We're talking about the panels producing an income. We're talking about the livestock and or cropping still producing an income, and then the advantages of the microclimate created by the solar panels that may allow the farmer to grow other crops that previously he wasn't able to due to you know, too high a temperature, too low a humidity. With the test site that the University of Arizona conducted with the panels three metres off the ground, the tomato production doubled and the water efficiency there increased by 157%. What it comes down to is this, when you place any structure anywhere, it'll create an effect. Nothing is disconnected from something else. So if I place a structure, a shading structure, out on um, a rural setting or anywhere, it will create its own microclimate, not only under the panel, but around the panel. 
and those effects will be transferred to whatever else is living under the panel or growing under the panel. In addition, there's been numerous studies in regards to bird strikes. So in other words, sheep giving birth to lambs are very susceptible to eagles, especially in Australia. With the solar panels actually installed on grazing land, the panels act as a, a barrier or a, a deterrent against the eagles. There'll be some areas of land that are totally suitable for agriculture and you wouldn't want to put solar panels a commercial ground mount system. And then at the other extreme, there's areas of land that would only benefit from a commercial solar system. But they're the extremes. Most land tends to fall in the middle, so it's finding that mix, that energy density of the solar panel array. How many crops do I bring? What crops? Wow, now I can grow a different kind of crop. My stocking rates with my sheep or my cattle. And in some cases, there's been examples where there's been crops and livestock and renewable energy grown all together.